This is the plaintiff, Cecile. She says she's been friends with the defendant for over 40 years, and she can't believe it's come down to this, a lawsuit. Turns out her one-time friend stole 22 pieces of valuable jewelry from her, and she refuses to return them. Well, friend or no friend, she wants the value of her stolen jewelry, which is $3,515.26, and she's suing for it now. This is the defendant, Maureen Bennon. She says she and the plaintiff started an online jewelry selling business, and the plaintiff still owes her money. She's keeping the 22 pieces of the jewelry until the plaintiff's debt is paid off. Simple as that. The plaintiff has thus far refused to pay her what she's owed, and she's not giving her anything back until she does. She's accused of breaking up a long-time friendship. The defendant has bought a counter suit for $3,387.50, the amount she's owed. All parties, please use your right hand. Be seated, come to order, please. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome, ma'am. Okay, Cecile doing business as Vintage Button Bling. You are suing Maureen Bennon, uh, your former partner, for $3,515.26. You have a counterclaim against her for $3,700 and $87.50. The two of you have known each other for 40 years. And here we are. Talk to me. Tell me what happened. Well, first of all, we are not partners. I started the jewelry business 10 years ago. I was uh, having lunch with the defendant and um, told her that I wanted to just start selling online instead of uh, continuing to travel. And she expressed interest in um, Repping it, basically. So, repping it, but you were splitting the profits 50, the, the gross, not even the profits 50 50. That was my big mistake. Okay, that's called a partner. Go ahead, go on. Okay, well, that was my big mistake. Okay. So, her role in it was to take a picture of the jewelry, to post it online, and to ship it when it was sold. My role was to design the jewelry, to buy all the parts necessary for it to pay all the expenses, the internet charges, the, f the shipping charges, all the cost of the jewelry. Why didn't you just do it yourself? If she had such a small role, why didn't you do it? I just didn't want to do it. I don't, I don't like the technical part exactly. of it. Exactly. Like so she had something part. valuable to you, which is the technical part. So you decide it's valuable enough that you're going to give her, for some reason, your agreement is 50% of the gross, even though it the expenses are mostly coming out of your side. Entirely. Okay, not well, mostly. so okay. Nobody made you do that. Why'd you do that? I know. It was, I that know. was All the right. foolish part so of So that my went part. on for how long? That went on for the last two years. All right, now the first year went well. The first year went well. And what happens the second year? The second year, um, we were not on the same um, internet site. Why not? Well, it was a problem because we were selling designer buttons made into jewelry. Designer buttons Desi made into jewelry. And uh, the designer... Uh, Sent you a cease corp and desist yeah, they, they because did. you can't sell designer buttons and make them into jewelry and profit for... Who was the designer who gave you the cease and desist? Chanel. Oh, and ha <laughs> how many times did Chanel ask you to cease and desist? Ten. Well, you guys both got away with trade infringement and murder. Okay, so now, so you both get away with murder until when? Until Etsy had had enough of you and then canceled your... Etsy does not want to deal with of anything not. unless Chanel gives us permission. Of course, because you're not allowed to do what you're doing. Yeah. So, so said, you got fired from Etsy. Where'd you go after that? Shopify. And now Shopify, you figured you'd, you'd be on the lam with Shopify for a while because it would take Chanel a bit to catch up. Not really Who's that. the lady who's with you? This is Devin. She assisted me in all okay. aspects of my business. All right, so you go to Shopify. How'd the sales go at Shopify? Well, Shopify is such a totally different thing that you have to build the traffic. What do you mean? We need an online I, presence. Go ahead, we, you can answer. Create what, an online presence, essentially. Yeah, I know. That's actually what you got paid for and got 50% of the profits for, knowing how to create an online presence. Right. But how exactly did you guys create an online presence for year two? They created social media accounts, and we, they paid for some Facebook ads, but, you know, it was basically came to a point in, in order to... It just wasn't profitable. Exactly. So then who decided it, it's not profitable and we should part ways? I did. Okay, what'd you tell her? 
I just said I don't see how I can keep spending the money that I've been putting out. What money were you putting out? The money that I was spending was on you because we were, I'm not the computer expert. So because of a, the 50-50 partnership, I was willing to invest my time and the money to, to learn sal- how so to her, do okay, it. Okay, so hold on. So you were being paid a salary by her? By the hour or how? Hourly, yes. By the hour. What was your hourly rate? $25. Okay. How many, what's the relationship between you two before this? Anything or? None. Okay. Met her in an elevator. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Listen. What is it you tell her? We're going to part ways how? What would you say? It was all done on emails. Okay. So, do you have the emails? Yes. May I see the emails? Hand them to my bailiff, please. So, Maureen sends you an email at 1213 on November 27. 10% of sales till I reach 2,000. I want to retrieve the approximately 2,000 I am underwater to break even. What 2,000 were you underwater? Uh, In what I spent. Why would that be appropriate for you to recoup the cost when she doesn't get to recoup the cost? But anyway, you agree to this. (laughs) I agree. I felt coerced. because. How were you coerced? What was the size of the gun that she put to your head? There was no gun. Right. But there was never a mention of returning it without the so, 10%. So say no and call the police that she has your stolen goods. You knew how to do that later. You did do that later. I, I so eventually... you end up agreeing that you will give her 10% of future sales. Yes. So you work out this new deal. And then what happens? Do you guys meet and do you get the inventory? What ends up happening? We agreed that I was going to pick up the inventory. And before I even got home, there was an email from them saying that they had forgotten to put in the most valuable of the collection. It was 79 pieces. Then the defendant decided that she wanted the money in cash in advance instead of waiting while the the sales were which I would never have agreed to. When did she say that to you? It's on the la- I think it's like Okay, the so hold on. So this is December year. 2nd. I paid Devin more than 8 hours, $25 per hour. I assume we'll split her bill. $100 each. Says who? Why does she have to pay that other $100? Your deal is done. I guess you're right. Of course. <laughs> and that was as you call it, the straw that broke the camel's back. Right. Because you'd already extorted from her the $2,000 in future sales to compensate you so that your business venture doesn't cost or risk you anything. That's what a business venture is. It's cost and risk for payoff. Okay, may I see the jewelry? You're going to want some. (laughs) (laughs) No, because I'm going to get in trouble with Chanel. (laughs) But yes, you are right. I am going to want some. Okay, so which part is the button? The center part and then the outside is embellishment that you put on or, yeah? Right. Are you remembering these as I'm pulling them out? I'm remembering them and I I had not been given a list or pictures of what she had and they're all one of a kind so I really couldn't bring pictures. I I know. Is this everything that was in that box? And a list was provided via email. Okay. You might have made Here. a list, but mm-hmm. I don't think I ever give, emailed give her a second. to her because okay. things got a little uh, shaky with us. Yeah, but this is her jewelry. It's not yours. You have no right to keep this stuff at all. What well, right would you no, have to keep I this stuff? No, I wasn't. I was holding it until... Until what? Until you met, she met your list of demands? I mean, that's ransom. You can't know. Can I say something? Yeah. It takes a lot to get you mad. <laughs> well, you're right. My husband tells me that all the time. That $100, which was the final straw for me, she gets $25 an hour. So her fee was $200, 16 man hours to pack a box. I'm sorry. 16 man hours. Eight eight hours to pack a box. But anyway, go ahead. Yeah. One hour to pack a box. It doesn't even matter. If it was $1, I know, it would exactly. make me mad. Those were, those okay. were my next words. Uh, can, I, can I ask you something? Sure. Uh, um, how long have you been in this business? Ten years. Ten years. And are you retired from whatever you used to do before that? Um, yes, I was in the fashion industry before that, and I had a fabulous retail store. Okay. And what about you? Were you in the same industry? Uh, I was in the manufacturing end, and Sissy was our first account. Oh, my goodness. She bought 
close so sad. from me. That is so sad. All those years ago. How yeah. did you get here, ladies? How many? You have a lot of friends you've known for 40 years? Because that feels I precious do. and special. <laughs> All right. So let's see what we're suing for here, and let's go through it item by item. You are suing for the jewelry. The jewelry is here. Before the parties leave the courthouse, we're going to go over everything to make sure that that's everything that you can prove was over there. Okay? Thank you. That takes care of the jewelry, which is the bulk of your lawsuit. The 281.26, I don't think there's a dispute about. There were $531.26 in sales that went directly to your credit card that shouldn't have, right? They went to my bank account. Oh, your bank account. I'm sorry. Yeah. And you agree that she is owed 281 of that because you're taking the other 250 for the Shopify. I expense. not only agreed, I let her know everything yeah, yeah, that I know, came I know. to me. So there's no question she's entitled to the 281.26. No now, problem. <laughs> okay, so now let's talk about your counterclaim. $100 for her portion of the assistant. I find against you on that for the reasons I've already described. 250 of the internet charges, that's taken care of by only giving her the 281.26. And now the 2,000, 10% of future sales. Why would you have the right to sue for that now? Welcome back to the People's Court, Harvey Levin here. Good idea, bad idea to go into business with a lifelong friend? Bad. Why? Why? Because you don't want to mix personal and business. Yet you do know the person better, right? True, but I say bad as well. I think because um, you're willing to let things slide that may eat you up inside and they might take advantage of the situation. Well, that's well put. What do you say? I say bad as well. Never mix business with pleasure. They always say that. I, I never quite understood what that meant going inside the courtroom. My 50% of the business was producing the photographs and the marketing. She took all my work and all her work, and she's suing me. Okay, so now, if your deal is that you get 10% of future sales up to a cap of 2,000, why aren't you waiting to get the 10% of future sales up to a cap of 2,000? She's suing you because you wouldn't give her back her jewelry. Did you try to get the jewelry back and she said, I'm not giving it to you? Yes. Because you wouldn't give her the $100? Yeah. The $100. This is no. about $100. You, but you guys are that? killing me. How do you let this get in the way of a 40-year friendship? Just $100. It's, it's not just that. Because her last email is an absolute ransom note. You give me a check for $2,350. What the $2,000, that, which what she demands she now. Yeah. Exactly. How do you figure that you get to demand that? Because I felt I could not know any way about what was yes, going I on know. for sale. And that, see, you know what the problem with you is? You want to be a businesswoman, and you want everybody else to absorb your risks. That's right. She, you wouldn't know. You would have to rely on her being honest, and you would have a right of auditing. That's the right that any ex-business partner has when they have a right of future sales. Oh, I See, didn't know that. Well, then, what makes you think you could get her to agree to 10% of future sales and then change your mind and say, ah, change my mind. I want out of the business, and you got to pay me two grand. You know why? Because you thought she was a pushover, because she had kind of been a pushover. She had been nice about it. She gave you 50% of the gross. She didn't demand any of her costs out. You demanded your costs out, and she had agreed. But guess what? She had her limit, and so do I. You do not get 10% of future sales today. Now, you want to argue to me why she doesn't even get 10% of future sales in the future. Why do you feel that she has forfeited that? Tell me. Because she didn't give you your jewelry? No, because she changed. Well, that's kind of why I feel so. That would have been a good answer, but go ahead. Well, she didn't give me the jewelry. Uh, <laughs> but uh, why else? That's why obvious. Else? But she also changed that agreement. And when you change an agreement, it's no longer an agreement. So your position is that she breached the agreement by demanding it up front, by not handing you back jewelry that she had originally agreed to hand you back. That's right. I agree with you. <laughs> I believe that she has, in essence, breached the agreement herself and that I'm not going to hold you to an agreement that she breached in multiple fashions. Thank you. I'm ordering the pieces of jewelry to go back to you because they belong to you. I am ordering $281 paid to you because that is what everybody agrees should go to you from the 531 that d right. shouldn't have gone there. I'm not ordering anything for Devin. That's your own uh, at your expense. And I am ordering that you no longer are entitled to keep $2,000 of future sales because you have breached the agreement. Therefore, we're done. That is my judgment. Good luck, folks. Thank you. 
So the plaintiff is going to get that jewelry back plus a couple of hundred dollars in it. And Ms. Benin, the yes. judge thinks you asked for too much. She did, yes. No, what do you think about that? Well, I think that all the pictures that she continues to use to yeah. sell the jewelry. Yeah. You were partners. You broke it up, you know. Yeah, you but the pictures the belong to me. Well, they belong to the business. The bottom line is you <laughs> ask for a little too much. And it broke the back there, well, and that's I, why I it's heard, all over. I okay? heard what the judge said. All right. Sorry about that. You're going to have to live with the case. Okay? Yes. The Where door's that go? way. This you way. go that way. Follow Rusty. <laughs> Cecile, Hi. step over here, please. Sure. What are you thinking right now? I'm thinking justice was done. Yeah. And that was, that was the whole point of the case to me. I just have a very strong feeling of justice, justice and... It's over. It's over. The deal is over. It's done. It's 40 years gone, right? Gone. Oh, my gosh. What a shame. Sweet. Thank you very much. Thank you. You may leave. Okay. Harvey, what do you think? Well, I, you know, Doug, essentially the judge allowed the plaintiff to rescind the deal because the defendant significantly breached this contract. That will do it for this case. Litigants, for the next case on the way into the courtroom right now.